Come on. There we go. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Let me apologize. We ran into a bad accident on the freeway that had traffic as a snail space. And when I say snail space, I really mean it was backed up like a parking lot. Mm -hmm. So we're sorry for we're late, but you know, some things out of your hands sometimes. They're out of your control. Okay, yeah. but we apologize for being late, but nevertheless, God is still good, and we're going to go right on with our Bible study. Mm -hmm. We've been talking about if Christ did not rise, what then? Last week, and I know you should have your Bibles, tune in, I mean, excuse me, tune in. Turn to John chapter 13. John chapter 13. That's where we were, all right? And I'm going to kind of rehearse while you go back and and look at that. While you find John chapter 13, let me tell you what we discussed last week. First of all, we found out that the Passover was getting ready to get started. All right? And they were in the upper room. They were in the upper room getting ready to celebrate the Passover when Jesus got up from the table before they had served the dinner. Now, I know it says that the uh, dinner had ended but let me correct that it had not begun yet all right it had not begun they were preparing the food and they had not served the food yet jesus got up from the table took off his outer garments took off his tunic put a towel around himself poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples feet okay and that's where we were he began to wash the disciples' feet. We are at verse number six. So we're going to start at verse what is John 13 and six. Okay, gotcha. John 13 and six. You, you stepped out, okay. but I told everybody else. John 13 and six. I'm going to read starting at the very, at the sixth verse. Okay? So remember, he's washing the disciples' feet. And now all of a sudden, he comes to Simon Peter. Verse 6 says, Then he came to Simon Peter and said to him, Lord, are you washing my feet? He's like asking him questions. Wait a minute, Lord. Why are you washing my feet? I ought to be washing your feet. Okay? But he said, Why are you washing my Lord, are you washing my feet? Mr. King, do you have that? Yes. Whatever you read. Thank you. Read that out of number When he six. came to Simon Peter, Peter said to him, Lord, are, are my feet to be washed by you? Is it for you to wash my feet? So he's kind of saying, why are you washing my feet? You are Lord. You're the Jesus Christ. You are the Messiah. You shouldn't be washing my feet. I should be washing your feet. Okay? And, and these words were very emphatic for Peter. He's puzzled by God. The Lord Jesus Christ would do this. Now he's seen Jesus humble himself before, but never to this point. Amen. Never to this point. Because as I said last week, and let me say this again, in the Asiatic countries and in the East, it was customary for when someone would come to your house, they had dirty feet because they... Most of the time, they didn't have, like we have, enclosed shoes. They wore sandals. Mm -hmm. And so traveling on those dirty, dusty roads, their feet would be dirty and dusty. And so when you walked into a guest house, when you were a guest and you walked into the host house, they would have a servant waiting there at the door with a basin of water for you to take off your sandals and wash your feet. That was the servant's job. Amen, amen. So Jesus has now condescended to that position of being a servant. Amen, amen. And so now he's washing the disciples' feet. And so Peter is puzzled that he would lower himself to that standard of washing the disciples' feet. And all of a sudden, Peter, after he's seen him watch all the other 11, comes to him, or maybe not quite to the 11, but it's Peter's turn. And he said, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? I should be washing yours. Amen. Okay? So now, 
Jesus says in verse 7, Jesus is answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will know after this. Yeah. Jesus, Read that. Said, Jesus said unto him, You do not understand now what I'm doing, but you will understand later on. And I'm going to get to that point where we're going to explain what Jesus was doing and why he did what he did. But he told Peter, I know you don't understand what I'm doing right now, Peter, but you're going, you're going to understand it because I'm going to explain it in a minute. But look what he says here. Peter said to him, you shall never wash my feet. Even though you told me you're going to explain that later. No, 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 no. I'm not going to allow you to wash my feet. Just that's plain as simple as that. Peter still was obstinate and still refused to let Jesus wash his feet. But listen to what Jesus said to him in verse 8. Uh, uh, let me finish the rest of verse 8. Jesus answered and said, If I do not wash you, you have no part with me. Read that. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you have no part in me. You have no share in companionship with me. Peter, if you don't allow me to do this, if you don't participate in this, you really have nothing to do with this business that I'm doing. You have no companionship with me. You have no part in this. You are not part of this group. That's what he's saying to him. Okay? So he's telling him, Peter, don't get obstinate. Don't get stubborn. You come this far with me. Don't back out now. Amen. Amen. Okay? And you know, sometimes, let me say this. Sometimes our humanness, our human nature, gets in the way of us seeing spiritual things. Amen. No doubt. And Peter didn't understand it. And so he was to the point where I'm just not going to let you wash my feet. But Jesus said, you got to let me do this, Peter, or you really don't have any part in mm -hmm. what I'm doing. Right. I know you don't understand it right now, but just come on and do this anyway. I'm going to explain it to you later. Right, and Jesus was asking him to trust him. But trust thank you. Him, trust him. Very good. Jesus was telling Peter, just trust me. Mm -hmm. Just have faith in me. Believe that I know what I'm doing, Peter. You've seen me all this time doing all these things. Don't back back now. Amen, amen. Don't do the Michael Jackson. Don't moonwalk back. Oh, so you cannot do it. <laughs> I did do it, though. <laughs> Don't move walk backwards, Peter. Don't go backwards. So look what it says now. Verse number nine. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, wash not only my feet, but my hands and my head too. So now he's persuaded to let the Lord do it. And not only did he say wash my feet, but he said, wash my hands and my head. Wash in other words, just bath. Yeah, just right. Uh-huh. Just go ahead and give me a bath. All right? In other words, go ahead. You have my permission. Just wash everything. But listen to what Jesus said here in verse 10. You know, Jesus always has an answer. Jesus said to him, he who has bathed need only to wash his feet, but is completely clean and you are clean, but not all of you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jesus said to him, anyone has bathed needs only to wash his feet, but is clean all over. And you, my disciples, are clean, but not all of you. So, if you've already taken a bath, and let me explain something to you. Remember, they're getting ready to do the Passover. Yeah. They had to be ceremonially clean. So it was the custom before they participated in the Passover celebration, they had to bathe. Yes. As a matter of fact, they had to bathe twice. Amen. To make sure that they were ceremonially clean. Okay? So they this was a practice that they had. Uh, and they did it on purpose. Jews had a custom that they always had to be ceremonial clean when they were getting ready to do some celebration. Okay? And 
They had to take a bath. As a matter of fact, they had to take a bath twice. Amen. So Jesus was telling them, you're already clean. Okay? You don't need to be bathed all over. Now, wherever they took a bath, it had to be somewhere outside. Amen. It wasn't in the house like our houses where we have bathtubs. We have a bathroom where we have bathtubs and showers and stuff like that. In the South, you had to take a bath in them big number 10 tubs or whatever outside. I remember when we first went to the South, they had my sister and I in the middle. It still like a field in a big old brown tin taking a bath. Back naked in the middle of the field. That, that, that may be true. I don't know about the South, but I remember when I was a little boy and we went to Phoenix, Arizona. Mm. I remember when we went to Phoenix, Arizona, and they had me and all my cousins, my sister, <laughs> and all our cousins in this big, like you said, 10, was it 10, what is it? They got different 10, numbers on them. 10, 12. 10, 12, something big. It was, it was bigger uh -huh. It was big enough to get three or four kids in there. was a lack of running water at that time, so they used water very quickly. That's true. That's right. To catch the water during the rain season, make it last throughout the next. And that's so period. true. That is so. And true. we took a bath outside in the front yard. Mm -hmm. Also, you can imagine it. There wasn't nothing but little kids be naked running around in the backyard. It was natural. Yeah, it, was it, natural. Was natural. It, was natural. it was natural. It was natural. And it was natural for them at that time too. It, it was. was. So wherever they took a bath, they had to walk from the bathhouse back into the house. So between. The bathhouse and the house, their feet could have gotten dirty. Amen. So they would still have a servant there to wash their, their feet. feet. Amen. Okay? So that's what it is. So that's why Jesus says, you don't need to take a full bath. You're only dirty. Your feet are only dirty from the time you walk from the bathhouse into the house. Okay? When they were getting ready to sit down and suffer. So therefore, your feet are, are, are the only thing that needs to be necessarily watched. Amen. And then he made the statement says, because you are all clean. Mm. Now, mm. understand he's talking about clean on the inside. Exactly. Exactly. He's not talking about being clean on the outside, even though they took a bath. Mm -hmm. He's talking about being spiritually clean. And righteous. And, and righteous. Mm -hmm. He said, all of you except one. All of you except one are clean. And, and notice this, that he even washed Judas's feet. He was still part of the 12. Even though he knew Judas was going to betray him. Because remember, if we go back, if we go back, oh, let's go back, 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 where? Back to verse 2. Go back to verse 2 for a minute. It was during supper. Go ahead. And supper being ended. The devil having already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Mm -hmm. So you go all the way back to verse 2. Jesus already knew that Judas was going to betray him. Well, that's not the first time he knew that. Though. It's not. It's not. But the point I'm trying to make is that he, even though he knew Judas was going to betray him, he still went on and washed his feet. He still went on and washed his feet. No. So he's still part of the 12. Sure. Yes, Sister King. That's it. almost like the wheat growing with the tear. I mean, he's the tear, but he's still one of the disciples. So it's treated the same. It is. I mean, that's the analogy I'm making. I don't know. Okay, I, I, yeah, I got what you're saying. What, the fact of the matter is, Jesus, even though he knew that Judas was going to betray him, still washed his feet. He had not excluded him exactly. as of yet. He's going to let Judas exclude himself. Amen. Okay? He still treated him the same as he treated the other 11. Okay? That's the point. Exactly. That, that, that is the point. He still went on and washed his feet, even though, and let me say something. You can take all the baths you want to on the outside. Yeah. It ain't going to change your heart. Mm -hmm. Washing true. on the outside is only going to clean the outside of your body. That's true. That's true. It's not going to change your heart and mind. Yeah. Judas, I don't care if he did take a ceremonial bath twice, he still had it in his heart to betray Jesus. Certainly, Lord. Yeah. And even if Jesus washed his feet, it wasn't going to change his mind. Yeah. He had his mind made up that he was still going to betray him. Yeah. But Jesus still went on and treated him 
just as if he was one of the other ones. And, but he let him know, not all of you are clean. That's right. And Judas didn't understand he was talking about him. Pastor Walker. I'm, sorry. I'm wondering, did Judas automatically know that he was going to be the one to betray, to betray him? Or was Jesus the only one that knew who was going to betray him? Because Judas was a hey, school boom. You know, he was right there with Jesus. He was. Yeah. But remember, did Judas. You think he knew? Did before, I think Judas knew before? before no. Yeah, I don't think he did either. I, I think this is what I think is this is what it is. Judas never fully accepted Jesus as the Messiah. He never accepted him as the anointed one. And because he did not come though with his preconceived notion of the way he wanted the Messiah to come, he had started making up his mind that he wasn't gonna fully accept it. And the and as as how's that saying go? The straw that broke the camel's back was when Mary broke open that bottle of perfume, that alabaster bottle of perfume, and poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped it with her hair. He had made up his mind right there. That was it. That was the last straw. Because remember, and I, I know you weren't here, so let me tell you what he said. He said, "That's a waste." That money could have been taken. We could have sold that perfume and given it to the poor. He was a treasure. He was he was a treasure. He was in charge of the money bag. But guess what? He was also a thief. He was also a thief. So he was pilfering some of the money as they collected money. Judas was taking some of that money, putting it in his pocket. Where that come from? I think the Bible tells us he was a thief. The Bible tells us he was a thief. He was in charge of the money bag, and he was taking money out. He was a thief. The, you read the Bible. Oh, yeah. You read in one of the Gospels. It'll tell you. I, and I'll find it for you if you need to. No, 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 but he, he was a thief. So he was he was in charge of the money, but he was also pilfering from it. He was stealing some of the money at the same time. His, his, his whole premise, when he said that's a waste, that could have been sold and given money to the poor, is he right even in there? He wasn't concerned about the poor. He was trying to find his way of getting these animals some more money. And that's probably not the first time he had second thoughts about stuff that Jesus was doing. But in verse 2, it says it was at that supper when his heart was, was turned. Was completely right. turned. Was completely turned. Was completely so, turned. When right. he had made up his mind, right. that's it. I, I'm, I'm, in other words, he was saying, I'm tired of following this guy. He didn't come the way I want to. He's not doing it. And I guarantee you, Judas had probably told him some things he should have done. And Jesus didn't do it. We, we, and he had his mind made up. I'm going to betray him. Okay? So that's this is nothing new. But I okay. think he, his mind was made up at that supper. Because he said that's when the Satan got hold of him real good. Yes. Okay? Well, it, he just further infiltrated him. Right. I mean, because we all fall short. We can be... But I'm just saying that to me, they're telling us that yeah, he was he was something else, but it was Satan that really got to him at that supper. It was. And I'm like, just kind of sounds supernatural to me, but okay, that's me. Yeah. <clears throat> Actually, my commentary said that Judas had already formed this plot six days before the Passover, mm -hmm. and that was when that happened with. The alabaster. In the alabaster. Right, right. So that was the straw that broke the camel's back, the icing on the cake, whatever superlative you want to use. Mm -hmm. That's when he finally made up his mind, I'm going to do this. Right. I'm going to betray this fellow because he's not doing what I want him to do. And he's wasting my time. And he's wasting money. And that, that's his thing is, why isn't he concerned about the treasure? You know, I'm just saying. Why do you mean Jesus? Yeah, he's probably asking himself, we going around, we preaching, we this, we that. How come he's not concerned about the treasure? You mean from Judas' because standpoint? Jesus, to him, to Judas, it seemed like Jesus was allowing this woman to waste the oil. Yes. And that means Jesus is not concerned about money and stuff like that. He's not. He I know, wasn't. I know, but I'm saying Judas had to come to terms. But Judas was using that as an excuse, so... He just wanted that the person to be sold so he could get his hands on the money. I, got, I know that, but okay. Keep going okay. on because I can talk about that all day. All right, so let's go on to, uh, I think we left off. Oh, yeah. No. Verse 11. No. 
No, we're in chapter 13. So John 13. We're in John 13. 13, 11. 13, 11. Yeah, we're in 11 now. Okay, and here's the answer that somebody, I think somebody asked. Verse 11. For he knew who would betray him. Oh, yeah. Therefore he said, you are not all clean. So Jesus already knew yeah. who was going to betray him. That's why he made the statement, you're all clean except one, mm -hmm. basically. You're not clean. Judas, he knew that Judas was going to betray him. Isn't that amazing? I'm going to show you how it made me think about something. Even though Jesus knew Judas was going to betray him, he still loved him. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And he demonstrated that by washing his feet. Yeah. Now, let's be for real. You know if there had been one of us, we would have told Judas, get out of here, man. I ain't washing your feet. Mm -hmm. You know we would have. Maybe. Maybe. Depending on know who we are. Well, that, 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 that ghetto side of us would have came I out. Would have just his feet. But, I, you know, but we would have had to think about it hard now. Well, I just think that Judas didn't realize the the depth of what he was doing. I, I just he didn't. Let me let me say this, Mr. King. He didn't realize until it was over. Exactly. He he wanted to do it because Jesus wasn't doing things the way he thought he should be doing. Mm -hmm. So he didn't realize that they were going to crucify him mm -hmm. and kill him, and he was sorry. After the fact, but that was too late then, right? Because that's why he went out and hung himself. I think I'm being like this because we all are have some Judas in us, okay? Really, uh, I really? say that we do have Judas. You think he's the only sinner? It's not he's the fact that Jesus, oh, he it's not the sinner, it's betraying Jesus. A lot of people betray Jesus. I ain't gonna say we all got that in us. No, not up to death. No, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to agree with that point. All I right, so now. Yes, what, what the Somebody. Now, this is my, 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 my understanding. So, somebody had to do it, and Jesus knew who that was going to be. Right. It was already prophesied. It was already in the scriptures. Cause, uh, uh, well, hold on. Because you make a, maybe because it, it already says it's in here. Yeah. Just hold on. I don't want to get in here. It, but it's going to tell us that. Uh, now, Jesus is now getting ready to do what he said he was going to do, what he told Peter he was going to do. Remember, he said, Peter, you don't understand what I'm doing here, but you will understand later on. So now we come to verse 12. So when he had washed their feet, taken his garments, and sat down again, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? Now he's getting ready to explain to them. Just can you read that. So when he had finished washing their feet and had put on his garments and had sat down again, he said to them, do you understand what I have done to you? Now, it sounds like he's asking a question. But what he's really saying is, consider what I've done to you. Think about what I've done to you. I want you to contemplate this. No, he didn't use that word, but consider. Think about what I've done to you. And he probably gave them a minute to think about it. Okay, he says, I'm, I'm now, I know you're thinking about, I'm going to explain why I did this. So he goes on to say in verse 13, you call me teacher and Lord, and you say, well, for so am I. I got to read 14 with this. Mm -hmm. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. Amen. So read 13 and 14 together. You call me teacher master and the Lord and you are right in doing so for that is what I am if I then your Lord and teacher and master have washed your feet you ought it it is your duty you are under obligation you owe it to wash one another's feet so now he's explaining to Peter as he promised he's fulfilling his promise that he would explain to him and to the rest of them what he had done. And so he said, you call me master and teacher. There's two words that the Jews use, rabbi and mar. Mm -hmm. No, let me, let me say it. Rabbi and mar, M-A-R. Mm -hmm. Those words were used for the Jewish doctors and those who were 
highly accredited as teachers. Okay. Rabbi and Mark, when you put those two titles together, it's for somebody who is a Jewish doctor who is highly accredited, and you only use it for certain people. Not medical doctor. Not medical, medical, medical doctor. doctor. Knowledge. Do yeah, doctor of okay. knowledge, divinity. Okay. Back in those days, not in this, no, not medical doctor. Is it a doctor of scrolls and, and things like that, or is it like... It's like a doctor of teaching. It's like a doctor of education. Right, but like what is I, it religious education or just regular education? No, 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 this is religious education. Okay. The Jews were concerned about religious education. That, I just needed an answer. Right, yeah, religious education. Okay, so this double title was given except only to the highly accredited teachers. And then Jesus says, when you call me Lord and teacher, you do right by saying that, because I am. Mm -hmm. So he says in verse 14, if I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you are obligated. Mm -hmm. You owe it to each other to wash each other's feet. Mm -hmm. That is, you should be ready after my example. If I have condescended myself, mm -hmm. love. put myself in the form of a slave, of a servant, and I'm your Lord and Master, I'm your teacher, and if I do it, then you ought to be able to do it. Sure, sure. You ought to condescend and do it too. Mm -hmm. You ought to be able, in other words, and, and he's going to fit, fit further explain in a minute, condescend to all the weaknesses of your brethren, to be willing to do the meanest offices, the, that means the lowest, mm -hmm. the lowest offices for them, and to prefer the least of them he said well when did we do it when you gave me something to eat when you gave me something to drink when you took me in when you visited me when i was in the hospital when you came and saw about when i was in prison when you have done it to the least of these, my brethren, it's just like you have done it to me. Amen. And so now he's telling them the same thing. When you do it to each other, it's just like doing it to me. Mm -hmm. And just like I just did to you all, because I'm your Lord and I'm your master, I'm your teacher, and I condescended and washed all your feet, you ought to be able to wash one another. Don't think that you want one above the other. Better than the other. And that's the attitude we all ought to have. And the Bible tells us, don't think more highly than yourself than you ought to think. Amen. But think of others more highly than you think of yourself. Exactly. Give honor. Give honor to the others Maybe. than yourself. Right. You let somebody else praise you. Don't always be willing to praise yourself. Let somebody, if somebody else will say something good about you, fine. But don't always try to stick your chest out, puff your chest out, and, and brag about what you've done and your accomplishments. Goes, I've learned how to do that. Yeah. I've learned not to not do that. That goes with the Sunday school lesson last Sunday when we talked about pride and uh, and the publican and the fair was it the Pharisee? Yeah, the Pharisee right. and the publican. But yes. it's not just I'm just saying that we were trying to figure out where our pride issues were. Okay. So in verse 15, and here's what here's where we really get to what Jesus is meaning by this. Mm -hmm. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Okay? I mean, that's almost self-explanatory, but Sister King, you can read that. For I have given you this as an example, so that you should do in your turn what I have done to you. Follow his example. Mm -hmm. Follow his example. He set an example for us when he got baptized. He got baptized by John the Baptist in the Jordan. And we should be baptized. Huh? He got uh, uh, set an example for us in taking the Lord's Supper. Amen. When they were in the upper room, they, they did the Lord's Supper. And we have, that's not in here this part. John, remember I told you last week, John excluded writing about the Holy Sacrament. He didn't need to write any more about it because the other three had explained it thoroughly. Okay. So John bypasses, and that's also part of this when they were in the upper room getting ready to celebrate 
the, the Passover. Right. But John doesn't even explain it because the other three explain it so thoroughly. Mm -hmm. But this is all part of it. Now, and I said this last week, some churches, some people believe that foot washing is part of communion service because it was instituted. I told you last week, my church that I grew up in, every time we had communion on the first Sunday, we had foot washing. The men would be in the front of the church and the women would go in the back behind the petition and they would wash their, each other's feet. And we did that every first Sunday. And there are some churches I found out in California and other, maybe other places that believe that foot washing is part of communion. It is not necessarily so, no. but it's all right if you do it. If you do it, you do it. Mm -hmm. If you believe it, if you want to do it, there's, you're not going to be condemned if you do it. But well, it's the body and the blood that works. Right, right. That is true, Pastor, but there's some people believe that foot washing was part of it since he did it that same night. Yeah. I'm just saying there's but some churches not. that believe that. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're right or wrong if you do or you don't. If you choose to do it, it's okay. If you don't choose to do it, it's still okay. God is not going to condemn you. You're absolutely right. The most important part is taking the Holy Sacrament. Mm -hmm. the, the cracker, which is, represents his body, and the wine, which represents his blood. Those are the most important things. But he, the point I'm trying to make is he's leaving us examples that we should follow. Mm -hmm. In other words, Jesus is telling them that you should be humble enough that you consider your brothers even more honorable than you are. That's the example he's leaving us. And he humbled himself, and you all ought to humble yourself. That's what I he's telling us. He said it's your duty, your obligation, and you owe it to each other. To exactly. And here's, and here's, he's going to further explain this in the 16th verse. Because here's the, here's the cap to all of this. Verse 16 says, most assuredly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master. And, or nor, is he who is sent greater than he who sent him. Mm -hmm. Read that. Okay. I assure you most solemnly, I tell you, a servant is not greater than his master, and no one who is sent is superior to the one who sent him. I used an illustration Sunday when I was talking about are you committed? And I used the example, one of the examples was a soldier. Mm -hmm. And I said, the soldier is under the authority of his commanding officer. Mm -hmm. He does not have any rights. Amen. He does not have a voice. If his commanding officer tells him to go out on the front line, he can't say, I ain't going out there on the front line. Mm -hmm. He can't do that because he's under orders. He is not the commander. He has to obey orders, what, like it or not. He has to go out on the front line if he's ordered to go out there. Whatever he's done or whatever he's told to do, he has to follow those orders. Mm -hmm. Or he could be court-martialed. Huh? He, he can refuse to do it, but he will be court-martialed. Yeah, well, there's a, there's a consequence for disobeying. Yeah, there's a, he can refuse to do it. It's just like a child. They can refuse to obey their parents. They so choose. But there is a consequence. It's called a butt whipping. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, or back, no, not probably. It was. Remember I taught a lesson on the, uh, if a child was rebellious, they would take him to the elders of the city and say, we got a rebellious son, and he won't listen to us, and he won't do it. And they would take him out of the, outside the gates and stone him to death. Boy, if we had that going on today. We wouldn't have a child on the would our kids be would our kids fall in line? We wouldn't have a child. Would we be no, we would not. <laughs> and I'm glad this is one time I'm glad they said it was a young man, not a woman. They didn't say a woman. Oh, they, no, they did it to the ladies. I know they did. I'm just saying they did it to children. Man, that's, that's but my point is that's when you are in the service, unless you are the commander, you have and believe me, everybody got somebody to answer to. I don't care if you don't, what do they call them, five-star general? Five-star general still got to answer to somebody, right? The, the president, the commander-in-chief, right? right? That's right. Everybody got somebody to answer to. Okay? So Jesus said, this is the example. He, he, he said, you don't understand, but you should follow my example. Now, yes, 
You're right. They don't have to, but if they don't, there's, there's a consequence. So he said that the servant is not greater than the master. Service back then couldn't tell. I ain't washing nobody's feet. They can come in this house. Look how dirty their feet are. I'm not going to wash nobody's feet. They wouldn't be a servant too long. They already knew. Okay. Now we all know. Let me use slavery. We already know what happened to us during slavery. We had no rights. We could not tell our master, I ain't going out there picking no cotton. It's too hot out there. You got snakes out there in the cotton fields. And they did have snakes out there in the cotton fields. I had a couple of people tell me that. It's not good. Yeah, yeah they had snakes in them cotton fields. Nothing to joke about. And besides the fact that picking cotton, you had to be careful about picking cotton because they had them pricks on them, didn't they? And insects. Mm -hmm. Huh? Then they have pricks. You had to get. Be careful how you pick cotton because uh, well, in the cotton it's ball itself, that you know, those four right. that open up had sharp edges on it. Right. You right. had to pick it. Like you that. had to pick it like this so you didn't get stuck, right? And didn't it have insects in it too? They might have, but I knew they had snakes. Bow weevils. I was getting ready to say bow weevils. Yeah, but bow weevils weren't going to bite you. Them, them snakes I, you had to be careful of. I heard that. They get in your house. My point is this. There's danger out there. My point is this. A slave couldn't say he wasn't going out there picking cotton. And, and I, I'm not, that's just a medial example. I, you know some of the other things that they did. So my point is, we did not have a right to refuse whatever the master told us to do. Mm -hmm. And when you have somebody over you, Jesus' example is a servant is not greater than his master. Amen. And one who is sent is not greater than the one who sends Sin. him. Mm -hmm. And who is he talking about? God. He's talking about God. He said, I'm not greater than God. Although he is God and he was equal with God, God sent him and he is on a divine mission and he could not refuse to do the Father's will. Mm -hmm. So he did. So he said, a servant is not greater than his master and the one who is sent is not greater than the one who sends him. Mm -hmm. So he's still going back to using this as example. If I've done this to you, then you ought to be doing it to each other. Amen. Okay? You with me so far? Amen. Okay, that's verse 16. Verse 17 says, If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Amen. If you know these things, blessed and happy and to be envy are you if you practice them, if you act accordingly and really do them. So let me change that word from if to since. Because since he's told them this, they know it now. It's not if you know it, I just told you. And I told you, I explained to you why I took, got up from the table, put the towel around me and washed your feet. So it's not if you know it now, you know why I did it because I just explained it to you. Now you know, and now you ought to know to do it. See, uh, what is that in the law it says? Ignorance is not. Uh, well, it's ignorance is bliss. No, not ignorance is bliss. <laughs> you, you can't use. You can't be ignorant when it comes to the law. You can't say I didn't know. It, it, it's no it's excuse. It's no it's excuse. No excuse. You, you're not gonna get off by saying that. You could try to say that, but the ignorance is no excuse for not knowing the law. Amen. Basically, and so if you're in court, you can't say, "Well, I didn't know. I didn't know not to rob a bank." Of course. I didn't know not to rob a bank. I didn't know not to shoot anybody. You can't use that as an excuse because you know it's wrong. So now they know this. these are the things that you're supposed to do. And you can't say that I did not know. But look what he says. You can. You can. But look what that last part says. Blessed are you if you do them. It is spiritual blessing. Really what does blessed mean? Happy. What else? It says happy to be envied. Okay, when, when we talk about Jesus, he used the word blessed when he was talking about the Beatitudes. Mm -hmm. It means that people are going to envy you. Excuse me. People are going to envy you. Blessed to be envied, to be have to have joy because. When you can say that you are truly blessed in spite of all of your circumstances, 
in spite of all the hell you're going through, in spite of all the trials and tribulations, in spite of all the things that's happened, and you still consider yourself blessed. And remember, the Beatitudes, he talked to when, even when you persecute. Blessed are you if you're persecuted for my sake. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Can you say that even when you're persecuted? That you're still blessed? But Jesus said you are. Yeah. You should still be happy. You should still have joy. So he said, blessed if you do the things that I told you. You're going to have joy. You're going to, you're going to be, people can, I don't know if it's that, people can wonder, how in the world can you still be happy with all the hell going on in your life? I don't know if anybody's ever asked you that. I have. I've had people, they, you know, when I was going through some problems back home, I knew people knew some of the things and they still said, man, you still care. You still going on. You still caring. Because I knew somebody. Amen. I knew somebody. And, and you know, the Bible tells us too, when we going through stuff, not to look like we are. Almost the same as when you fasting. You ain't got to tell everybody you fasting and you dying from hunger, you know. And he's saying our countenance should still be the same as a blessed person, no matter what we're going through. Now listen to this and pay attention to this. Because he said, if you know these things, happy if you do, true happiness consists in the knowledge of God and in the obedience to him. True happiness mm -hmm. consists in the knowledge of God and in obedience to him. There are many people who may know about God but don't really know God. Amen. There's a big difference. I have a relationship. Are you? Well, yeah. that's true. Yeah. That goes along with, because if you have a relationship, you know him, you're going to obey him. Exactly. You're going to have a relationship. There are a lot of people that know that there is a God or some may that's not. I do we know we have some agnostics, we have some atheists that they don't believe in God. But even Satan. I, what? Even the devil know there is okay, God. Okay, well, see. Okay, so it, it you know. Yeah, he does. And the demons do too. Because mm -hmm. when they saw Jesus and they asked him, did you come to torment us, son of God? <laughs> we know who you are. Jesus told him, be quiet. Don't tell nobody who I am. Many times he told the demon, shut up, don't say nothing. Be quiet, don't be telling nobody, don't spill the beans. I don't want people to know right now. You know, it's amazing why Jesus would tell people after they heal them, don't go tell nobody. Why do you think he did that? I'll ask him when I get to heaven, I really don't have an answer. So they wouldn't just follow him to be healed. Bam, exactly. Exactly. Mm. He didn't want people just like when he fed the 5,000 right. and when he went on the other side of the lake mm. and they came around there and chased that. He said, the only reason why you coming to me is because I fed you. Mm -hmm. You ain't coming to me because you want to learn anything about me mm -hmm. or learn anything of me. You came because I fed you and you want some, yeah, some more to eat. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times Jesus would tell people, go your way, but don't tell nobody. Because he didn't want people just coming after him just to be healed, but not to know anything about it. Mm -hmm. That's exactly why. See, and we're no different sometimes. We always say, Lord, give me, give me, give me, give me. But we're not trying to really find out anything about Jesus. We're not trying to have a closer personal relationship with him. But we want, we want him to bless us, but we don't want to serve him. We don't want to be obedient to him. We don't want to follow his teachings. Just bless me and leave me alone. That's our humanness, yes. Yeah, just bless me, but leave me alone. I don't want to follow this. Yeah, there's not a soul on earth that wouldn't want to bless him. I guarantee you, there's not a soul on earth that wouldn't want to bless him. But how many would really want to truly follow Jesus mm -hmm. when it comes to making those sacrifices and those hardcore decisions that you have to make? Or as Paul told Timothy, to endure hardness. Mm -hmm as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. See, a lot of people want to go to heaven, but they don't want to die. <laughs> now, you didn't get that one. I'll let that I sink in for a minute. A lot of people want to go to heaven, but they don't want to die. Yeah. 
A lot of people want to be blessed, but they don't know what the hardship that comes with it. They don't want the persecution. And this is the bad thing that if we we got hardship regardless, whether you're a Christian or not, you gonna live a you gonna have some hardships. But Christian not everybody not. think that's the king. Oh, Christian, believe me, I've been on both sides of the coin. You gonna mm -hmm. get you gonna have a hard life. Yeah. My life is much better since I'm a Christian. Still let's, let's, enduring, but you know, it's much better. Does the Bible not tell us that it rains on the good and the bad? And the evil, yes. It rains on the good and the just and the unjust. Mm -hmm. Because when the rain comes, the rain don't say, well, I'm going to pass this one. This one's pure. You see that every day. <laughs> it's going to hit us, too. Well, and it's the same question people ask all the time. How come these evil people are prospering? Look, I'm looking at them. They're getting cars. They got homes. You know, they got this. They got that. And 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 we're wondering why they're prospering. That's you know, true. and they, we can sit. Well, it's one thing. We're not the judge. But if, if they... We do see people we know don't have nothing to do with the Jesus or the Bible and nothing else prospering. We you do. Know? But that's why Psalms 37 says, fret not thyself because of evil, evil doers. Mm -hmm. Neither be envious of the workers of iniquity. Right. But they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as a green herb. Right. Fret not thyself because of him who prospers in his way. Yes. The man who brings wicked devices to pay. Yeah, they may be getting by now. Yeah. But they ain't gonna forever get by. Mm -hmm. And we and, and that's a valid question because we wonder why do bad things happen to good people? Mm -hmm. It seems that way. It's, it almost seems that way that bad things happen to good people and bad people get good things happening to them. It almost seems that way, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Bad things, like bad things do happen to everybody. And good things happen to everybody too. Yeah. Did you look, I mean, look, look at Trump. You know uh, how he was raised. He was raised with the silver spoon. Right. See, I wasn't going to mention so that. Look at what's, what's, what's going on now. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and 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 regardless to they, they, if they, they never, let me say this the right way. If they never have to suffer uh, conviction, punishment, jail time. Okay, even prison. jail time, prison time, anything, they never have to suffer down here. There is a day of reckoning. It is. Oh, yeah. There is a day of reckoning. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, they ain't going to get away forever. Okay, they may get away now. And, and, and we wonder if bad people are ever going to get caught. They may not get caught down here. Yeah. They may get away with a whole lot of stuff down here. I, I don't want to start talking about Donald Trump, but I'm just saying. Let's not mention his name. Yeah, I'm just saying that bad people eventually are going to have to give an answer, whoever it might be. My brother-in-law says, you might get back. Just gonna, you're not going to get away. My mother said yeah, that. Yeah, my mother used to say that. My grandmother too. Right. I think old, all old folks used to say that. They <laughs> wasn't old when they were saying that we thought they was old. But it's the truth. That's wisdom. Well, my You might, my you might get by, but you're not going to get away Okay. With whatever it is. So happy and blessed. Uh, let me finish this. It's not only happiness consists in the knowledge of God and in obedience to him. A man, listen to this, listen to this. A man is not happy because he knows much, but because he receives much of the divine nature mm -hmm. and is in all his conduct conformed to the divine will. Mm -hmm. Let me say that again. A man is not happy because he knows much. Okay, how many letters is behind your name? It's not how much knowledge you have. But because he receives much mm -hmm. of the divine nature and is in all his conduct conformed to the divine will. Yes. Let me use an example. Paul was probably one of the most intelligent Pharisees that there ever was. Mm -hmm. He was smarter than most of the Pharisees. Okay, and that's probably why they made him the chief persecutor of the Christians, mm -hmm. because he was so very intelligent. Paul spoke several languages, but it wasn't because of what he knew. It was what he received from God. Mm -hmm. 
and his obedience after his Damascus Road experience. And we know that Paul wrote more than half of the New Testament, right. about 13 books in the New Testament. Right, right. Paul wrote and started many churches in Asia. So it wasn't so much of what he knew, he had knowledge, it was his what he received from God mm -hmm. and his obedience to the will of God and what he went out and did. Right. And, can, and even though all of his persecutions, all of his sufferings, Paul was beaten three times with 39 lashes, left for dead, shipwrecked, put in prison on at least three different occasions, and still he did more for the cause of Christ and all the other apostles together. Mm -hmm. In, like I said, in writing over half of the New Testament right. and starting all those churches. So we can use Paul as an example of an intelligent person, but it wasn't head knowledge. It was his surrender to God's will. Amen. And that's what we ought to be. That's okay? what I to be, yeah. That's what we, well, of course. Or, or as it says, we, we should be pressing yes. towards that mark for the prize of the high calling of Christ. We should be pressing here, yeah, I got it. Mm -hmm. We should be striving every day to get better and better. We should be striving every day to get more Christ-like. Mm -hmm. We should be striving every day to surrender more to God's will in our life. Now, that takes practice. Yeah. When I used to coach, I used to have my players run the same play over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. Put that playbook down. I want you to learn how to run this play without even thinking about it. You know what hole to go to. You know who to block. You, I, it shouldn't have to, I shouldn't have to tell you, you blocking this guy. You, we're going to run that play until it's drummed in your head till it's second nature. You're going to be sleeping thinking about this. Because mm -hmm. when it comes time and you get in the heat of the battle, you don't have time to get no playbook. Amen. You better know it. Amen. And my time is up. Amen. 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 We are not through. But, we, but again, I apologize for being late. To everybody that's tuning in to social media and everybody that's here, accidents happen, and we have no control over it. Yeah. We're trying to dance our way around that traffic, and it was a bad accident, especially all those trucks on the 15 freeway. I guess they traveled all the way up to Mesquite and Utah. All the way, all the way north. All the way north. Man, those trucks are just backed up way back. We was backed up all the way to the 95 freeway. We couldn't even get on the 15. Any prayer requests? for me and the in the situation that we have to be in at this particular moment, but overall in recognizing Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And you know, forgive me for my outburst, but sometimes when you have a disobeying wife, you have to kind of lose yeah. it a little bit. And I did not intend to lose it, but it just happened. And I it, ask your forgiveness. Life happens. And I ask her forgiveness. Life happens. Just like that. Uh, and I'm going to tell you, um, uh, Sunday, it's first Sunday. We're going to. Um, she went home. I think she went home today. Okay. Well, I need to know because I was going. I was going to ask you Sunday, but I, I'm, I'm telling you now, um, Sister Broadbent and Sister um, Sister Cynthia Milner, we're going to take communion to them Sunday. It's, it's the first Sunday, mm -hmm. so um, you are. Uh, um, Sister King already has Cynthia's, but wait a minute, she's not at home. She's she with her mother. I told you where she is. You have her mother's number? She's down the street, yeah. Okay. Well, I want you to call Sister Broadbent okay. and tell her and make sure she knows it, it's all right for us to come. And make you sure know, that's my policy. The address. Can see it. Send, well, you have the address, right? Her mom no, address. She oh, she no, I mean, you have the address to her home. Let me, let, let's pray. Here? We can talk, talk about that later. Okay. We can talk about it. Okay. So let's pray. Father God, we come to you at the end of this Bible study. We just thank you, Father, in spite of the hardship, in spite of the yes, Lord. being delayed by that accident, in spite of even what happened tonight, we still praise you. Hallelujah. We still magnify you. We still glorify Bless you. We still Jesus. give you the praise. Bless your name. And as the pastor asked for forgiveness, you already knew yes. what was going to happen but you also have forgiveness in your heart. Yes. He confessed, he Bless apologized, you, 
and I know that you have forgiven him. Bless you, Jesus. So, Father, let's just move on from Bless. there. Thank you, Father. Let's pick ourselves up and just move on, Heavenly yes. Father. Yes, Jesus. Just like you forgave us, let us forgive one another. Yes, Lord. Because you told us that if we can't learn how to forgive one another, then we can't be forgiven by you. Amen. So, Father, we pray that you forgive Bless. each and every one of us. Because right we've all sinned and fallen short of your glory. Thank you, Jesus. So, Father, we just thank you for this privilege and opportunity that we have to come out here and study your word. Thank that you, we Lord may Jesus. grow in grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We lift up all of our sick and afflicted, whatever they may be suffering from, whether it's physical, mental, financial, social, or whatever it may be. Lord, we're looking to you because you are the great I am. So we just thank you for this privilege. You, we Father. thank you for this opportunity. We give you praise, we give you honor, yes, and we Lord. give you glory. Yes, and it is in the name of Jesus, Jesus that we pray name. and offer this prayer. Hallelujah. And all in agreement say together, Amen, Amen, Amen. 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 Now.